Hello, welcome back to the Mark Janot Show, the tech show about hacking. In this video, I'm going to go over credit card cloning. I'm going to go over what it is, how it works, and how we can protect ourselves so it doesn't happen to us. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. What is credit card cloning, right? Card cloning is a type of fraud in which information on a card used for a transaction is covertly and illegally duplicated. Basically, it's a process thieves use to copy the information on a transaction card without stealing the physical card itself. This information is then copied onto a new or reformatted card, allowing criminals to use it to make fraudulent purchases or gain unauthorized access to a person's account. The most widespread version is credit card cloning, though debit card cloning is also common. Any type of card that can be used to authorize a payment or account access, even a gift card, could be a target for card cloning. So how does card cloning work? The most common form of card cloning is known as skimming and generally works like this. Number one, criminals install a skimmer, a credit card cloning machine that secretly reads and copies card information in an ATM or point of sale terminal. Number two, a customer's card is fed through a card reader on the ATM or POS device to facilitate the transaction and the skimmer to copy the card's information. Number three, the criminals retrieve the information copied by the skimmer. Number four, the criminals can then use the stolen information as is to commit fraud, copy it to a fabricated or stolen card, i.e. card cloning, and or sell it on the black market. So how does clo card cloning work in a technical sense? Payment cards can store and transmit information in several different ways. So the tools and methods used to clone cards can vary depending on the situation. We have the concept of magnetic stripe, right? Most payment cards have a magnetic stripe that runs along the back. This stripe stores and transmits analog transaction information in much the same way as a cassette tape stores an audio signal. Unfortunately, this method offers no encoding protection, so it is easy to clone MagStripe only cards using even a rudimentary skimming machine. That's why these types of cards are being phased out in many places. Next, we have the EMV chip. An EMV, which is the EuroPay MasterCard and Visa chip, is a microchip installed in a newer payment cards. It, uh, it dynamically encrypts each transaction made with the card. This makes it difficult to access the actual authorization information, even if a criminal attempts to clone the card. It's not foolproof, though. Thieves have developed devices called shimmers that operate in much the same way as skimmers, but work on cards with EMV chips. They have also figured out a, how to transfer the digital information on an EMV chip to an analog magnetic stripe, this effectively clones the card while bypassing the security provided by the EMV chip. Then we have the contactless tap, which is the newest payment cards are equipped with radio frequency identification technology, which is RFID. This, is, this allows them to transmit transaction information to a card reader simply by being nearby without physically inserting the card in a slot. This helps to avoid skimmers and shimmers, but is still not without its vulnerabilities. Being that criminals have developed an RFID enabled card cloning device they can conceal on their bodies while walking down the street. Th this allows them to steal information from RFID enabled cards just by being close enough in the proximity to the owners. Wow. So, how card cloning fraud works. Most credit card cloning fraud is done through the use of skimmers. Skimmers read credit card information such as numbers, pins, CVV data through the magnetic stripe and can be attached to hardware such as the point of sale, the POS terminals, or ATMs allowing them to steal whoever uses that hardware's information. Criminals can also create a fake keypad on POS terminals or ATMs that allow them to steal pin information. Once the information is stolen, the criminal can then make a physical credit card linked to another person's money. The original card holder may not even realize that this has happened. However, it is possible to tell by looking at their financial statements, bank, state bank accounts, or by seeing if their credit score has changed. 
Examples of credit card cloning fraud, there are several ways to capture the information needed to make a clone card. A thief may simply look over someone's shoulder to learn their card's pin or use social engineering tricks to coerce a person to into revealing this information. They could also install a fake keypad on an ATM or point of sale device to copy the pin of anyone who inserts a card. So here are some common card cloning scenarios. Number one, we have the point of sale terminal skimming. Criminals attach a skimmer device to a merchant's point of sale device, sometimes as easily as plugging it into a USB port. To make things even easier, they may recruit one of the merchant's employees or technicians to install the skimmer and retrieve the stolen data for them. So this may be like a, what, what is called the insider attack, getting somebody on the inside, right? Then when a customer swipes their payment card through the machine, the skimmer copies their card details. This information is then relayed to or downloaded by thieves who use it to clone cards and then make fraudulent purchases or steal money from bank accounts. Some creative fraudsters are modifying fake POS terminals to have credentials of real merchants. Then they conduct fraudulent return transactions to low gift cards or debit cards and then cash out the stolen money at ATMs. Number two, we have ATM skimming, which is fraudsters using skimmers at ATMs to capture information off bank cards in order to illegally access other people's bank accounts. Usually the skimmer is placed over the top of the original card reader, but is so similar in size, color, and texture that it's challenging to detect. The skimmer could also be installed inside the terminal or along exposed wiring. Criminals may also install a tiny hidden camera in front of the ATM or nearby in view of the keypad so they can record a victim's bank card pin. Alternatively, they may install a fake keypad on top of the original keypad to record a victim's key presses, thereby stealing their pin. Another one is fuel pump skimming, which is pay at the pump, is expected at major branded gas stations and fraudsters are taking advantage of that to clone cards. Often the skimmer they install will be within the internal wiring of the payment processing machine, so customers won't know that it's there. For this exact reason, it can be safer just to pay in the store uh, you know, with the attendant rather than using a credit or debit card at the register or at the pump. With all this, how can we protect ourselves from credit card cloning? Well, here are some things that we can do. We have to educate the public, right? Consumers should be aware of how card cloning works, how big of a threat it is, and how they can protect themselves. So. Here are some tips to offer not only within our community, but the greater society, right? Check card readers for bulk or other suspicious traits before inserting your card. Monitor your financial accounts and set up suspicious activity alerts. Use ATMs associated with banks whenever possible. Use EMV chip readers or contactless payment whenever possible. Contact your bank or card provider immediately if you think your card has been cloned. So what do you think about uh, this topic? Uh, what, I, what, what did I bring? Do you have better ideas of how we can protect ourselves from card cloning? I want to know your opinion. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Please share the content. I love you. Stay safe. See you in the next video.